My name is Jay Egg. I'm with Egg Geo, uh, the president of Egg Geo, a 35 year old consulting company centered in St. Petersburg, Florida, with uh, consulting work all over. I'm going to talk today a little bit about thermal energy networks uh, with regard to the revolution of one particular project in New York City. Because as they say, if you can do it in New York, you can do it anywhere. So we're going to focus on that. But first, I've got to share a little bit about what a thermal energy network is. A thermal energy network is a network of piping, like you see this opaque pipe here. It's got the red, lighter red and blue dashes and arrows in it. It's a circuitry of piping that moves fluid through a city, water in a pipe, just like a water main. And the purpose for moving this fluid through the city is to move the energy from one building to another building that may need it. For example, if building number nine here was a data center, like it says here in the key, it would be able to reject heat because data centers create a lot of heat to number three, which is an apartment building or an office building or some other building that might need heat. Uh, in the wintertime, there's going to be uh, a lot of heat need for heat. And so we can use resources such as energy piles under buildings, aquifers uh, down below in the earth where we normally pump water from for uh, irrigation and drinking anyway, surface waters, uh, you name it. Even wastewater is a great resource for heat because if, you're, uh, if you think about it for a moment, all of that water that goes down the sewer pipes is at least room temperature, if not uh, warmer, and during the middle of the winter, it's freezing, sometimes below zero outside. I'm going to move on and tell you a little bit more about Egg Geo. Um, while I said, while we started uh, business in 1990, the um, history it goes back to 1948, where my grandfather was in a mechanical business in Soda Springs, Idaho. Um, the trades have been very good to our family, and uh, we continue to to move through that. As a matter of fact, my uh, mechanical competency uh, helped me become a nuclear power engineer in the U.S. Navy. And when I got out in 1987, with my, I worked with my wife to create a beautiful family. And we set up shop in uh, Florida. And we worked effectively for about 19 years. And then the geothermal revolution really kicked in during the Obama administration when the stimulus package of 2009 was passed, affording 30% tax credits to geothermal heat pumps. So district scale building energy uh, started on Fe in February 2021 for this community you see here. Uh, it covers five blocks and includes 15 22-story buildings. It's called the Penn South neighborhood in the Chelsea District of New York. We were asked to decarbonize these 15 22-story buildings, which currently had a central energy plant with chillers and a five megawatt boiler to handle the cooling and heating of these 15 22-story buildings. So we did our first study in 2021 on that, and it netted a great deal of information we then applied for a, um, a uh, state grant, which basically asked, how can we decarbonize these buildings um, without drilling as few holes as possible? And the industry typically knows that with geothermal technologies, and you'll see what a borehole looks like in a moment, with geothermal technologies, you need one borehole per two or three tons. This being an 1800 ton, five megawatt load, would mean it would need literally hundreds, if not thousands of boreholes, which is cumbersome and messy. And so they said, how few boreholes can you uh, use to decarbonize this and turn off this five megawatt boiler? And there are actually two of them because there's redundancy in everything in large projects like this. In addition to that, Local Law 97 um, it is a basically a cap and trade. If you don't decarbonize by a certain date, you pay carbon taxes, you get letter grades just like restaurants. And if your grade is failing, then you pay a fine until you get the carbon down. So the uh, folks over at Penn South were taking this very seriously and they decided to move forward with applying for public opportunity notice 4614. <clears throat> and it 
is a, a um, program that provides design assistance by the state if you are trying to decarbonize your building, especially in this case with thermal energy networks or community heat pumps. So the first thing we did on that is we looked at their footprint and used a New York City building uh, geothermal tool to get a, a readout of the geothermal potential underneath these buildings. It proved out the potential was there and then we went to work on looking at the neighbors since it was going to be a community loop. And we spent about a year in serious talks with their neighbors, with the State University of New York. This is their campus here, with the public school system, that's him, these guys here, and with the US Post Office. The largest sorting station in uh, Manhattan is here, perhaps uh, even more than in Manhattan, but they have a quite a load over at the uh, at the post office, it's actually an eight megawatt uh, thermal rejection load because of the, the computers and the equipment and the people that work in this massive uh, sorting station for the US Postal Service. So we asked them, and it wasn't as easy as asking them, but we got permission to use their uh, energy to and run a pipeline over to that, uh, over to that power plant where they have the uh, boilers and chillers and uh, once we got that permission, we applied to Pond 4614, and they were granted the funding to move forward with full design of this. And this continues to evolve as many other buildings have decided they would like to tie into this thermal energy network. So we're just about done with the design phase. And as you can imagine, this gets very expensive, especially in the streets of New York, because there are a lot of utilities under there, as you can see in this, in this um, image. And it gives the various sizing for natural gas capacity in a certain pipeline, traditional district energy capacity, and the improved energy capacity of using an ambient temperature thermal energy network. Then we modeled the facilities and we found the peak heating loads, peak cooling loads, which are obviously in blue and red here. And we identified some uh, diversity in those loads. And then we looked at, because what if the post office moves out? You know, we um, nothing. There is no law saying they have to operate and reject eight, eight megawatts of heat every year. I mean, every day if they um, if they need to do something else. So we had to do a backup plan. We wanted it to be uh, be an, uh, a geothermal answer. So we started to go forward with identifying the loop field that would be needed, and it was determined this blue area is the loops that would be needed to do the work. Now, in the blue area that's hashed here, you'll see some uh, black arrows here. These black arrows are actual bore fields that are proposed that would not just cover that area, but they would fan out into the area around using advanced drilling technologies, radial technologies, which uh, the industry is using quite a bit now. And what it does is it takes a, dr a drill rig that can angle the bore and from a very small footprint, they can get a much larger area of uh, heating and cooling capacity down in the ground. In other words, a great heat, uh, thermal heat source and a great thermal heat sink. Similarly, um, you can see this angle drill rig from Framingham uh, and the Framingham, this is from Massachusetts, it's just showing one that's completed, using a very small footprint to cover a very large area. And you can kind of see this is an area of drilling in another project, and this is how far out the loops fan. So from an area of basically a sidewalk, we can do football fields of area underground, and that's advanced drilling technologies. It's still very invasive, so we started looking at other um, geothermal technologies, such as aquifer-coupled opportunities identified in the Chelsea location, in other words, where Penn South is. They have something uh, geological, um, resource called glacial till. And that means when the glaciers uh, uh, melted, a lot of rocks came tumbling down with the uh, big ice melt, and they created uh, a lot of huge boulder type sediment that has a lot of fresh water in it. And so it just so happened in this Chelsea area, they have good glacial till, and that means they have abundant water, uh, very, very shallow under the uh, property. And when you do an aquifer coupled thermal energy transfer system, 
which is a geothermal system, you pump water just like you would from a water well from a borehole, and you run it through in exchangers in the central energy plant, and then you inject it at the other side of the property. The hard part or the scientific part is determining where to pull the water and where to reject it, and then you have to model it to make sure it will work. So the first things our hydrogeologists and scientists did was they identified the Manhattan regional flow in the glacial till. They did that through geological surveys and local surveys. Then they modeled the flow and thermal effect over 25 years, com computed it, created digital twins, which showed where the uh, wells could go and how much thermal influence it would have on their property and how much thermal influence it would have on adjacent properties. So this is some more of that modeling and the thermal, uh, thermal result of pumping uh, basically infinitely. When you go out 25 years, you're not going to change much from there. So that's our digital twin and how much it would change the, uh, the aquifer in the area in temperature before it evened out. And as you can see here, we have an increase uh, because it's uh, it can be cool, uh, can be uh, cooling dominant, putting heat into the aquifer. We have an increase of only three degrees um, Celsius, and then it flattens out uh, infinitely. So that's something that we can work with and get permission from the uh, folks at the local uh, uh, at the local DC to make sure they're okay with it, and they are. So this is what our piping is going to look like. The Thermal Energy Network neighborhood is identified. Piping arrangements are proposed. First, we looked at the piping that is under the um, under the uh, the five block area of Penn South. Then we identified, and you can see these are going in the streets, like you saw in the other picture. So we take it from the post office down here and around over here to the energy plant, and then we distribute to the other buildings here and here. And then we go to SUNY here, and we uh, that's as far as we're going to design to, but we're designing it to be expandable because we've been asked by um, Penn Station and uh, Amtrak and uh, the public schools to make sure we have enough for them. The piping configurations for something like this look like this, and there's way more than you can, tell, to, can, can figure out just looking at this, but these are the hydronic schematics that show um, what we call a cluster. We have three clusters of buildings and they are connected by a, a thermal energy transportation loop, which moves energy from one cluster to another, just like the electric grid. When somebody needs electricity and somebody doesn't need it uh, and somebody has extra, they can move it around. And of course, we have backup systems that's called needs plus one redundancies, such as cooling towers and boilers that can click on if for some reason the geothermal resources and you see the closed loop and aquifer based systems here uh, are not working. So that is my presentation. I'm ready for any questions from uh, our esteemed audience. Thank you.